Hey everyone, welcome to my new series, Walkie Talk, where I interview a variety of industry professionals. We dive into how they got started in their career, what made them successful, and answer questions that newbies need to know to get started in that department. In this video, I interview Marcella Caudill, a professional costumer and aspiring costume designer. Check it out. So in this video, I'm interviewing Marcella Cockdale, an Atlanta-based costume designer who has been working in film and television for over five years. She's worked in the costume department on a variety of sets like All Eyes on Me, I, Tanya, Hidden Figures, The Darkest Minds, Stuber, Zombieland 2, and the upcoming Marvel series WandaVision. So <laughs> <laughs> when I read how like your credits i was like oh my gosh like you've worked on a lot of different things i'm really lucky because in atlanta like so much shoots here mm -hmm. so like, every year we have like 80 productions or something how did you end up getting started in costume design i have always been interested in it and i went to school at unc wilmington um and studied film and theater it was a double major and in the film program they did not go over costume whatsoever so that's why i did theater too was to focus on costumes after i graduated a friend of mine told me the production emails that they the shows send out they don't always pass them on to like the appropriate departments so like production will end up with like a thousand emails of all these people who are looking to pa so he told me to email a designer directly so I looked at like what was going on in Wilmington at the time, and they were about to shoot on um, The Longest Ride. It was a Nicholas Sparks movie. So I emailed the designer, and I didn't really have a resume. Like, I worked in the costume shop at the theater, so I knew how to sew. And so I was like, I can sew. Like, <laughs> please hire me. And so she ended up like liking that I found her email, mm -hmm. and um, she set up an interview with me, and I came in. And she was like, if you were looking for a 1940 skirt, where would you go? And so I just like spouted off like four different shops around town that were like vintage stores or whatever. And so then she wanted to hire me and I never heard back. I was like, what's going on? So I called the supervisor and he's like, oh yeah, uh, we hired somebody else who was a daughter of somebody. And I was just like, <laughs> I like wanted to cry and I was just like okay you know what the designer liked me that means something just let it go like don't worry about it and a week later um one of the background customers sprained her ankle so the designer called me and was like can you come in and be a customer and I was like yes <laughs> I can so then I just had to figure it out and I got all my things together my kit and came into work and the designer saw me and she was like, try not to drown. It was like the only thing she said. And I like, gulped like, in a cartoon and then ended up being fine. That sounds... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's so interesting because, yeah, like I feel like a lot of times it does get down to like some sort of political hire and then yeah. you just become like super lucky on like your first hire. And that's crazy. Yeah. So, like, how did that shoot end up going? Like, was it, did it end up being as crazy as you made it seem? <laughs> it was, we had 19-hour days. Oh, my God. And every day was a forced call. And I was still waitressing at the time. Oh. So I would waitress on the weekends at this little tea room downtown Wilmington. <laughs> and because I didn't know, like, if I was going to work after the movie. And yeah. I really liked the job. And I was like. I can do it and it was it was a nightmare so it was really hard but it was cool because it was like that movie was like 1940s mm -hmm. so it was like everything I wanted to do and then it was like also contemporary so like the whole I knew nothing about like rentals or I just had to learn on the spot and they ended up actually letting the main background customer go so then it was just me <laughs> oh like, wow so I just figured it out but yeah, so you I, were just like a really good team. Yeah. Yeah. So you were just like learning as you went and that ended up being like a good foundation for you. Yeah, and like everybody was like so supportive. Like the customers, oh. like they knew I had no idea what mm -hmm. I was doing. And so they would like say like this is what you do, like go take pictures of the background standing like this, you mm -hmm. know, like they, so they like really 
I owe them like everything. <laughs> <laughs> They're really great. That's awesome. So like after your first, you know, credit like that, how was it getting another job? Like was it just as hard or were you able to get referred or how was it? So in Wilmington, it was like really small. There was only Sleepy Hollow was filming at the time and another Nicholas Sparks movie. I think it's called The Choice or something. So I day played on those just by cold emailing mm. um, the supervisors, like, beg- like you know, not begging, but just being like, oh, I just worked on this, like if you need somebody. And so they like, let me come in for a little bit. And then I saw this post, um, I don't even remember where, but it was, do you, okay, this is really embarrassing. Do you know uh, Blue Mountain State, the TV show? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, they made a movie, and I was the costume supervisor on that movie. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It was, like, um, 18 days in a row, but it was all nights, and it was oh supposed to be summer, and we shot in December, and we had bikinis on everybody, like, <laughs> So, like, working on stuff like like that, I was really glad because I learned so much from, like, the indies because that was, like, um, a tier one, I think. And then I ended up doing, like, another indie that never came out, like, right after that. So I feel like I learned a lot more on the smaller productions. Mm -hmm. And then it, like, helped me, like, feel better and more confident in my job. Yeah, that's – I feel like that's how it works – For a lot of like positions like for me like I felt like when you're more hands-on and you're working on an indie film but like you're doing higher level things it makes you feel so much more prepared for like the larger films when you're like in a smaller role yeah exactly and it's like you can wear more hats like I was the Mm -hmm. dryer and I was the shopper and I like the designer was in the hospital for like the entire week of prep so I was by myself like just figuring it all out I had a production meeting I was like I literally was in school like six months ago. <laughs> so like you just figure it out so speaking of like school how do you yeah. feel that helped you preparing for your career I know you said that in film they didn't really do anything costuming so you did theater to help you yeah. out with that like do you feel like in the end it was necessary and it helped you in your career so I go back and forth about film school and like whatever the whole thing but I grew up on a farm in North Carolina, and I know, like, everybody in my town either became a farmer, a mechanic, a teacher, or, like, a lawyer, so I knew if I didn't go to to college, I would never be here. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, like, mine was all, like, analytical and, like, analyzing films and history of lights and whatever, and, like, regardless of that, like, we got to make movies and we got to, like, collaborate and, like, we got to do, like, my senior thesis. I was the production designer and the costume designer and, like, the prop master, and it was just so much fun. And um, so I don't know. Like, right now how I feel is college is good (laughs) for film school. (laughs) Yeah. It's, like, you just learn and it's just fun. I I ask because, like, a lot of people that – maybe went to college but majored in something else or didn't go to college they ask like oh I really want to jump into the film industry but is that something that you know is gonna harm me because I didn't do it oh yeah I don't think so yeah I don't think so at all like honestly I just feel like it's all about the person's like energy and Mm -hmm. like their their attitude towards wanting to do the work and like being told like the way you think you should do it isn't really the way, like, because they have so many, like, systems already in place that they know work, you Mm -hmm. know, like, I mean, you have done a lot of things, too, so you understand, like, everybody has, like, this is the way to do it, and so, like, as long as you can, like, find your way in. Mm -hmm. So, like, what would you suggest, like, for someone that's kind of in that phase in their life where they want to get into costuming, what would you suggest be their path to take i honestly like facebook i know is kind of lame but that's how everybody finds work here like in groups postings yeah Mm -hmm. like we have this like uh 479 it's like our union and we have a facebook group that has like 550 costumers or supervisors who are always looking for day players and it's like 
we all know each other and we're all like, yeah, hire this person. They're great. And it's just like so supportive. And even if you don't know what you're doing, I feel like we're all like open to like at least throwing you a bone and be like, yeah. here's a dead yeah. Like, let's see how you do, you know? Like, let's say someone does join a group and kind of gets in the door in an interview. What mm-hmm. is something that a costume designer or a supervisor would look like, look for in a PA? I think that they look for someone who is going to be, um, like take initiative Mm -hmm. and like someone who is just like authentic wanting them to learn. And like, isn't like upset about being a PA because like sometimes a PA like has like crappy duties that they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And like, we, we've all been there and we all know like returns are the worst thing to do, but it's just part of it. Like, if you can find a way to enjoy your day and not be miserable, like, they'll probably hire you on to the next show, you know? Since you've um, worked in Atlanta for so long, like, how do you feel, like, I know you said, like, so much gets shot there. Like, pretty much everything gets shot there. Like, yeah. how would you kind of describe the city when it comes to working in film and TV? Like, are there pros? Are there cons? I really, I think Atlanta is really great because there's so, like, especially for costumes, like, there's so much shopping here. Mm-hmm. Like, everything is within, we have, like, this thing called the 285 perimeter, and, like, everything is within it. Like, the entire whatever. So you just, like, hop on the perimeter and you just, like, go around. But um, it's so easy to get around, and there's so many, like, little neighborhoods, like, Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know like everything's like 20 minutes away like no matter where you are and it's just like super simple yeah but at the same time it's just like no one really hustles you know oh really like what do you mean by that like everybody just gets comfortable like the reason whenever I lived in North Carolina I was the film incentive died so I was like okay I can either move to Atlanta New York or LA And I was, like, nervous about New York because it's, like, it feels like it's cutthroat. And, like, L.A., I was, like, I don't know about that either. It's so expensive. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, Atlanta, there's so much going on. Like, I should go to Atlanta, build my resume, make some connections, and just, like, work my way up. So that's why I chose that. But then I'm, like, looking around and, like, all no one – well, I don't want to say nobody because there are people who, like – really work themselves like really hard but it's just like the dream and like the motivation and it's just not like you go to New York and it's just like magical like everybody <laughs> on a mission and like here it's just like hey we're at work yeah you know? I never heard of that before like I never even thought of like kind of just being cozy because I feel like for like what I know about like film and tv is that like everybody's pretty much cutthroat so it sounds like Atlanta might be like a nice change of pace (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's so nice and we're all like we all like really love each other like even like the different departments but it's it's comfortable and it's like a nice place to live and it's like affordable and I don't know it's a good it's a good stepping stone I think for people okay yeah so it's like a good starting point I've gotten a lot of messages of people that, like, want to be PAs, but they have no experience. Um, I've been recommending people to, like, to volunteer on student film projects or just yeah. kind of shoot their shot. Like, what, what are you, what's your advice? I think that's actually a really good advice because everybody, that's where you, like, learn the ropes. And there's this one friend of mine who he shoots projects, like, once a year. So, like, that's really nice to, like he'll put out, like, a casting call or, like, he'll need a PA or whatever. And I think that's, like, a good step. If you're just not in one of those cities, like, the first step would be to move. Like, my girlfriend, whenever she, whenever we were planning to move to Atlanta, she never, like, she was afraid to move because she didn't have a job lined up. And she's like, I don't know. Like, should I go? Do I not? And she's like, okay, I'm just going to go. And literally the day she arrived, she got a job. Oh, that's like, crazy. Just by things that worked out. And it's like, had she never had, like, bit the bullet and moved, she would have missed out on the job. And, like, so it's just everything. I feel like we're all meant, where we're meant to be will end up if we just, like, make take the action to get there. Right. You know? Yeah. I feel like it's kind of a mixture of, like, opportunity and, like, being ready, basically. Yeah. 
like being prepared and taking a chance and being open to new experiences and just like putting yourself out there and like trying to connect with people. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many people that I run into like at the mall when I'm working and they're like, how do you get into film? And I like, I've always wanted to help people. And it's like, I don't know. It just happens. Like I can't talk about work. I gotta go. You know? yeah. <laughs> so speaking of like wanting to help people get in, you wrote an ebook all about how to get started as a costuming PA. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Like what people can learn? Yeah, I'm so excited. So, like I said, I've always wanted to help people. And so for the past two years, I've been trying to write this course, um, which I ended up turning into an ebook during this whole quarantine because I was like, when are we ever going to be able to see people again? So, <laughs> so, anyways, had other customers and supervisors and coordinators look at the book and they like provided their feedback and like, helped me edit and like make sure it was the right information before it like came out. But um, I go over like the processes and like the tried and true systems that we have in the costume department. And it starts out like with the basics, like what is a costume? Like, what is an age or dyer? What does like, what does teching mean? Like we go over, I go over like all the positions, like the basic jobs or whatever. And then, um, I talk about like how to do a lunch order and then just like how to do things like the best way to make it like to make you stand out and to make people notice you and to make them want to bring you on to another show or like be like you shouldn't be a PA you should be a customer like because that does happen and then um like how to take down receipts what's a P card what's petty cash what's what's an average day look like because even, like, now, like, whenever I get on a show, like, before the first day, I can never, like, fall asleep because I'm just so nervous. Yeah. Imagine a PA who has no idea what they're doing and, like, has never done anything. They just, like, had this chance, you know, and it's, like, I want at least for them to know what to expect. Mm-hmm. So, all that said, it's, like, 95% of the job what the book is about, and it's, like, over... I think it's like almost 170 pages. And then like if you buy the book or the ebook, um, I created this Facebook group which has a lot of supervisors from LA and Atlanta who work in Atlanta a lot and they always need to find a PA. So I wanna make like if you buy the book, you can be on this group because I know I trust you and I rec- I can recommend you and here's like all these people that trust my recommendation, you know, and they like can introduce themselves or they can ask a question or they can say I'm available this week, like whatever. That sounds amazing. You're like really helping bridge the gap with like people that really have no idea. Like I feel like I went to film school and I didn't learn how to do like P cards or like all the, like how to make sure I get the lunch right, you know, like all those things that like are so, they're, they're minor but they're so so important and i feel Mm -hmm. like if people went into a job already knowing that that's like amazing it feels minor but it's not because you're dealing with like thousands of dollars Mm -hmm. yeah it's true so let's say someone's been a pa for a few shows or a few years what do you recommend they do to be able to move up in the industry um i would recommend that they join the union Um, I know that the union in LA and the union in Atlanta is a little bit different. Like in LA, I think you have to have like 30 days on a union show before you can join. But here it's not like that. You just have to have, I think it's like, I think it's like $1,500 or like $1,800 or something. And you pay for the year and then you have to like work a certain amount of days once you're in. Yeah, you can take like classes like within the union and like supervisors teach it or like age or dyers or seamstresses and you can just let, like learn a lot more skills that you weren't necessarily able to learn as a PA. And then, um, so take all the classes and then you can call the union or go online and put yourself on an availability list. So then like other shows can, if they need extra people, they can call you. Um, I would say join Facebook and join the 479 costumer group and um 
yeah, just post that you're available for work and that you're looking. It's just like right now, it's kind of not a good time because we're all available for work. Yeah. But it's like super helpful. Um, and we do use the Facebook to hire people. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge for your new book that's coming out. I'm going to make sure to link that in the description for anybody that's interested. Um, But thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks so much. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget that Marcella's book is linked in the description below. If you like the series and you want to see more, hit that like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.